this morning. We're pleased to have Masahito Yamazaki, who will talk about 3D and Equals 4 theories, quiver varieties, and vertex operator algebras. Okay, uh, let's see, is the microphone on? Uh, I think it's on. Uh, maybe I should make it closer. Uh, is it better now? Uh, or maybe not, so so. Well, let's see, why is that? Um, Lay the middle, center, okay. Uh, here, okay, uh, is that better? Uh, somehow it feels it's not the best, but I uh, ho hope, hope everybody can hear. Okay, good, so if, if, please let me know if you don't hear anything. O also, yeah, this time I'm very tempted to use the blackboard, Well, this is uh, part of the uh, meeting of mathematicians, and uh, uh, so I'm very tempted to use this actually very beautiful blackboard. And, and of course, uh, let me thank the talk by thanking the organizers. And actually, just like Amina, I, I came to ICTP uh, as a graduate student. In fact, it was one of my first uh, trips to Europe as a graduate student. And ever since, I've been here, uh, and also to Trieste many times. It's always a pleasure to be back. Now, uh, so this is a conference about mathematical physics, right? So, so it's an interaction between mathematics and physics. Sometimes the development of mathematics uh, uh, motivates the development of physics and vice versa. Um, but it's actually also true that um, sometimes, for example, through physics, different branches of mathematics are connected. And so actually, even from a purely mathematical viewpoint, the interaction is pretty, pretty useful, and vice versa. And that's the general theme of my talk. And, uh, and that's reflected in the title. So this talk is about three and equal four theories. Uh, and uh, the relation between quiver varieties and uh, vertex operator algebra. So uh, quiver varieties, vertex operator algebras, they're mathematical where they find concepts. Uh, but we want to see that there is a, a very nice parallel in between them. And we're going to uh, see extract new information from there. And this work is in collaboration with my excellent collaborators, uh, Yuan Okoman, uh, Myungbo Sim, and Yehao Tso, who are or used to be uh, the postdoc at my institute. And the one thing to note is that uh, this is based on a paper uh, which appeared last December uh, in, in physics. Um, but actually, the physics paper contains some theorems and statements. And also, we are preparing yet another paper in pure mass. Um, so hopefully, depending on preference, you can have a look at either of them and, uh, um, and try to enjoy it. Yeah, so let's see. Uh, so let me today uh, begin with our first general introduction. And uh, uh, well, let's, let me first start with the quiver Q. I try to write reasonably large, so, or maybe this is too large. So Q quiver is just uh, vertex and edges, just in case. Um, and uh, uh, and um, uh, let's see. And then also, we, we associate the dimension vector B and W. So uh, I just uh, saved some, a little bit of time by drawing a board. So uh, we have nodes. Uh, this is the quiver, but there are also frame nodes, which are represented by squares, which is the standard notations. And you associate uh, the numbers, dimension vectors, B and W. Uh, so that's Nakajima's notation. And uh, so this is the defining data. So I keep using Q, B, and W. And, and this data is the defining data for uh, three-dimensional uh, N equal four gauge theory, if you are a physicist, uh, gauge theory. And uh, so, uh, well, this data is uh, Q0, the vertices, is like an N equal 4 uh, vector multiplet. Uh, so it uh, represents a gauge group. So the gauge group is uh, like a product of, say, if it's the SUN or UN, let's say UN BI. Uh, does it look OK? Yeah. OK, I think it's OK. And, and then there is a Q1. Uh, so this is the edges, arrows. So this is n equal four hypermultiplet, and uh, and then there are arrows, and uh, uh, I'm sure that a lot of people have seen this already. But if there are arrows in between, for example, it's in the bifundamental representation. So okay, it's a standard definition of the quiver gauge theory. And then one nice thing about it is that once you have this this theory, um, it's a physical theory, but you can extract different mathematical ingredients. Um, so one is the uh, one of such thing. Uh, okay, maybe la let me write it here. One such thing is the quiver variety, Nakajima quiver variety. Uh, okay, so what is it? Well, Nakajima quiver variety in the physics language uh, is the Higgs branch of the moduli space, vacuum moduli space. Uh, let me write M Higgs, and uh, so and uh, I'm going to write it as M Q B W. Uh, I want to define it later, and then uh, and then on the other hand, there is also uh, a different concept, uh, which is the vertex operator algebra. And uh, it goes by the name H or A twisted vertex operator algebra uh, boundary. 
uh, vertex of linear algebra. Um, so uh, I'm going to denote it by B uh, of uh, the dimension of the Q and dimension of vector. Uh, okay, so how to extract this? Well, the basic idea is to go to the boundary. So this is a three-dimensional theory, and you can try to go to the boundary. Uh, but first of all, this is three equal four supersymmetry. You have to specify what boundary conditions you talk about. You, you choose, uh, you preserve the boundary condition, which is half, zero, four supersymmetry, et cetera. But the details doesn't matter for, for the purposes of my talk. It's just that you have a 3D theory, and uh, on, the, on the boundary, you have a 2D, uh, which is described by this BOA. And now there are two different types of boundary conditions. Uh, we, you, well, actually there are more, but there are two different types of boundary conditions, uh, which, which are called A and B type. Uh, a and B, as, in the, as you are familiar with, is mirror symmetry. Uh, and, uh, it, and I'm going to consider the A type. Uh, the previous talk is actually with the Coulomb branch, which is the other B type boundary condition. But in this talk, I'm going to consider A type slash Higgs type boundary condition. And, uh, oh, and, and then the statement that you get on non trivial BOA starting from this 3D equal 4 theory. Now, uh, well, let's see. So this is enough, but one way to, another way of saying it, that is that if you start with 3D equal 4 theory, so this is a physical theory with a gauge coupling constant, et cetera, uh, but you can also go to uh, 3D series, 3D TQFT by the topological twist. Um, and uh, uh, this is, a, well, let's see. Again, there is A twist, B twist, but let's say uh, A twisted TQFT. Um, and once you have the TQFT, you can also go to the boundary. So, uh, and that's how you get a BOA. So this is uh, like a generalization of the celebrate correspondence between Chan Simons and the middle model on the boundary. Uh, but it's a more in involved one. This 3D TQFT, for example, partly because this thing contains many extra matters, scalar fields. Not, uh, so it's not, for example, pure Chan Simons, but more things. And in particular, it contains local operators. Um, and uh, that means that uh, there is an even richer structure. Uh, on the line operators, uh, point-like defect inside the line operator. So there are even higher categorical structures and uh, non-semi-simple um, TQFT, et cetera. There are a lot of structures. So if you're interested in node series, et cetera, this is what is underlying here, here. Although I'm not really going to talk about 3D TQFT, but just concentrate on this particular VOA. Uh, now, now the question is that the natural question, if you look at this picture, uh, is that what is the relation between, uh, first of all, what is this BOA? I just thought it's abstracted as BOA. Is there a procedure to specify it? And also, uh, can you identify it? Like what are the generators or central charge or uh, et, et cetera, et cetera. So that's a, that's a very concrete question. And in fact, that question has been addressed. I should say that, uh, I, so this is a Blackboard talk, uh, um, so I apologize, I'm not going to list uh, that many references. In fact, very few references to save time. Uh, but at least I should say that uh, this is uh, this type of discussion initiated by Costero and Gato, uh, Kevin and uh, Davide, and there are many people who have worked on this, uh, in particular, Thomas Kreuzi, Tudo Di Mofte, Nick Garner, and many other people. Sorry, I don't name everybody. Uh, but uh, let's see. And uh, so it's, a, it's an interesting subject on its own. Uh, and uh, in, in the most, so far, most of the development happens for Abelian gauge series. But I'm going to, what my interest is partly, partly about trying to understand the connection to Kuiper varieties, uh, general Kuiper varieties. So uh, I want to go to the non-Abelian case uh, and then discuss the associate BOA. Now, uh, the, there are question is, one question is, of course, uh, how, to, how to understand this. Uh, but uh, there is another question as to how to understand the relation between the two. Right, so it's a, it sounds like a natural question. Uh, well, a priori, there are different objects, uh, but it turns out that there is a very close relation. Um, and uh, so the motto is that if you start with a Kuiper variety, you can chiralize. Um, so make it holomorphic, and then you get uh, this uh, A and H twisted boundary condition. Uh, although, with a lot of subtleties, actually. So in fact, clarifying that it's, uh, uh, but at least the motto is that you, 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 promote, you kind of uplift it, and you get a BOA. So Kuiper variety uplifted as a BOA. Uh, now, you can also try to go the other way around, and uh, that's also a very subtle story, and part of our, our interest is to try to prove the statements. But at least uh, at the zero order, uh, there is a concept of associated variety. Associated variety. And if I had time, I might com comment just a little bit on this. But, uh, but there is a, the statement is that if you have a BOA, uh, there is an associated uh, variety. There is some variety, geometry. And, and then so, roughly speaking, if you go start from here, and then you can go extract the geometry and then go back there. That's uh, one definition of chiralization. 
Um, so the, the, the goal of my talk is to try to understand the uh, first the relation between the two. And, and I'm going to explain the story, in particular this construction of BOA, in such a way that the parallel with this is extremely clear. And then uh, I'm going to study uh, this BOA itself, and, uh, and in particular, uh, connection to the double algebras, um, and uh, free field realizations, or Miura transformation, if you like, uh, free field. Uh, free field realizations. So that's what I'm going to talk about. Okay, hope these things are clear. Um, okay, now, now let's try to uh, discuss um, the, uh, the first uh, quiver variety side. Now, I, I'm sure that uh, many people have seen the definition of quiver varieties, and I'm going to comment very little uh, <laughs> about that. Uh, only the minimal ingredients needed. So, okay, so let's, let's come to the quiver variety. So, okay, so what are the quiver varieties? Well, it's defined by hi uh, hyperkähler quotient, quotient or something, by some group action. So you need to first show what are the starting object. And the starting object I might write as a uh, lip, uh, lip of the quiver, QBW. Um, and, and uh, okay, so what is the, so you regard the quiver uh, uh, as the uh, set of correction of vector spaces located at each point. So here I have a little bit more messy figure. So if you have V1, you have, a, for example, here you have V2, and you have a vector space of the V2 with dimension uh, small V2. And you have the, uh, again, similarly, the vector space. And then, of course, these arrows are uh, morphism. It's in between. And in particular here, um, uh, there is a notation. So there are arrows, arrows between different vertices. And uh, the bars, arrows coming to the right, I call X. Y called uh, Y. And there are also arrows coming from the, uh, uh, the uh, squares, framing nodes. That's I denoted by alpha and beta. So, uh, so these are the data. Uh, so roughly speaking, these are like alpha xi, yi. And uh, uh, okay, so I already capitalized it. Uh, okay, xi, yi, uh, which is not a good notation, but okay, alpha uh, beta i. And then, um, um, yeah, so the, the, the correction of these. Th these are just a cotangent of lip lip. That's what I mean by that. So it's just a correction of matrices, if you like. Now, uh, there's action of the uh, GLB, what I like GLB. So this is the a complex equation of the gauge group, GLBI, I at the associated vertices. And uh, so it acts on the space by uh, conjugation by matrices, of course. And, uh, and then there is a concept of the moment map, uh, moment map. Uh, there, is a, there is an ice moment map associated with this action. And, and this takes the form of x, y, i, i, minus y, i, minus one, x, i, minus one, plus uh, alpha, i, beta, i. So you can check that, for example, x, i, y, i, uh, let's see, uh, sorry, x, i, y, i, so that first goes to, oh, sorry, this index was wrong, y, i, and come back, for example. So if you start in that vertex, you can go around, there are three, three ways of going around, and they all appear inside this moment map. And, and then once you have this moment map, uh, people, uh, I think you can see even when I'm right here, and then there is a, a quotient. Uh, so that's defined, so the, that's, the, that's the definition of the, uh, of the quiver variety, so this is m, whereas this is mu, mu inverse uh, zero, and then I impose a stability, et cetera, but then there's a, a GOB. Um, so this is the definition of the Nakajima quiver variety, and if you like, uh, you're also, I, I can also define an extended version uh, uh, where the, uh, the values of the complex moment maps are also regarded as part of the coordinates. So this is a uh, copies of C uh, for each vertex. Uh, so for each vertex, there's a FI parameter, if you like, and, uh, and those you regard as part of the coordinate. So this is the minimal definition of quiver variety. Okay, so now I'm going to chiralize the story, or I'm going to discuss the BOA version of this story. How does it go? Well, uh, the basic idea is actually very simple. So here, there, these are just the matrices, right? So, and, uh, um, but I'm going to promote these matrices into fields of the BOA. That's the motto. Um, so let's chiralize into BOA. Um, well, um, let's see. 
So the first ingredient, well, there, there, but then, so there is a, I'm going to emphasize the parallel with the quiver variety story, although there are important subtleties which we'll come to. But first of all, um, well, first of all, before the reduction, it was just a correction of matrices. And then um, we have the simple ingredients. Um, so uh, so the, I'm going to define B, B sharp. So this is a B, B, o, A, B, O, A, uh, defined from the data of the uh, Q, B, W. So th this consists of several different ingredients. Uh, the first is the uh, free beta gamma system. Free beta gamma system, and, and these are promoted to x i y i, and uh, yeah, I think alpha i beta i, uh, the counterpart alpha i beta i. And except that these are, it, it almost looks like okay, alpha replaced by i and j. Sorry, maybe this is not a good notation, but uh, uh, the point is that these alpha x and y's are uh, beta gamma beta gamma goals. So what it means is that this itself, uh, for example, it's a matrix, so it has a matrix index uh, y i. Uh, gamma delta, et cetera, and then impose the uh, relation, like uh, uh, y, x, and y, w. So this is equal to, oh, okay, so I need to write down the indices too, alpha beta, y, i, uh, w, gamma delta. So this is like a one minus, one over one minus delta, and there's a delta ij, if you like, there are also contractible indices. Um, so this is just a simple uh, free vector gamma system. Um, so for each arrow, uh, you're going to associate the free beta gamma system. And, uh, and for each arrow in the opposite direction, we have some relation like this. Um, now, you're going to write down something afterwards, but let's, let me first proceed to uh, the next ingredient. So this is the counterpart of this tista lab. Now, uh, there is a counterpart of this thing, uh, and uh, uh, in this, uh, uh, of the action of the, uh, uh, the group. So the action of the group uh, comes from the fact that the uh, Higgs branch has an action. And, uh, and that comes from the fact, in physics language, that means that there is a flavor symmetry. Now, when you have the flavor symmetry, there is a background gauge field you can turn on. And if you go to the boundary, you get the vertex operator version of the, of the uh, algebra, uh, which is the uh, Katsumudi algebra. So uh, the, there's a statement is that uh, there is a, a current of the Katsumudi algebra, which you can write down. So at each vertex, uh, you and I, so uh, U and I current. And, uh, and this takes actually exactly the same form as uh, this formula. So you just promote this to, uh, to fuse. Um, and uh, I'm going to write down the same thing. Xi minus one plus uh, I, 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 uh, G I. And uh, uh, yeah, there are going to be corrections, but uh, that's, uh, that's the idea at least. Um, and uh, uh, okay, so that's the current. And then once you have the current, uh, you can do the counterpart of the symplectic reduction. And in, in the BOA, there is a reduction procedure associated with the, uh, the gauge group, uh, which is this uh, BRST reduction. So you're going to do the BRST reduction. Oh, if you like, uh, uh, if you're you more mathematics language, it's a relative version of the semi-infinite cohomology. Uh, well, semi-infinite means something like uh, Dirac C. So, but in any case, there is a uh, BRST reduction in semi-infinite cohomology, and that's uh, what we're going to do. And in order to discuss that, first, you need to incorporate, uh, incorporate, uh, include uh, BC goals. Um, okay, so these are, uh, th these are the BC goals. And then, uh, so it's essentially the same commutation relation as this, and, uh, except that these are, of course, fermions. And then once you have the BC goals, uh, you can uh, write down uh, the, the uh, supercharge. And uh, there is a canonical formula for this, which is like uh, exponential super i. And then there is this, uh, uh, the current. So you, you combine all these currents. Uh, so let's call that the uh, JB star. And then there is a half times uh, JBC, um, where this is the, the current associated with this thing. Uh, well, the formula doesn't matter for this purpose, for this talk, but I can write it down. Uh, so there is some uh, BRST operator like this, which you can write down. And once you have the BRST charge, uh, which is squared to zero, then uh, you know what to do, which is to take uh, cohomology. Um, so uh, so th th that's uh, BRST cohomology or semi-infinite cohomology, 
and uh, with respect to the supercharge. Uh, so that, that you can write, and uh, in the mathematics notation, you write this as a this thing, and uh, uh, this uh, GLB action uh, uh, with respect to this uh, vertex operator algebra. Uh, so uh, that's, uh, that's this thing. Uh, okay, I forgot whether to include the BC in the notation, but anyway, the meaning is clear. So you just add the BC ghost and then the, do the BRC reduction. That's the story. Except that there is some subtlety. So, uh, of course, for this BRC cohomology to work, you, you, need, you need Q squared to zero, of course. Uh, but, but the question is that, is this actually the case? There is already a formula, and I have essentially told the old OP, so you can just compute it. And it turns out that it's actually not zero in general. So it's not zero. So you cannot define the BRC cohomology. Something is wrong. Now, um, there is actually a physical counterpart of the story. Um, so I said that these uh, 2D BOAs are the boundary theory of the 3D theory. Now, when you start with the 3D theory and go to the boundary, in general, uh, there are anomalies associated with the boundary, uh, which means that you have to cancel the anomalies and, uh, and you need to incorporate. So that you can do by incorporating some extra uh, uh, matters localized on the boundary. And another way of saying that, purely BOA way of saying that, is that this Q doesn't square to zero, so you have to add something to make it zero. Um, let's see. Yeah, so more technically speaking, the JJ has a commutator, sorry, OPE, and JJ OPE has a double pole, double pole, which is whose coefficient proportional to the level. That's like a quantum effect, and that spoils, up, spoils everything up because if you have a double pole, you want to take a residue, it's more complicated. In any case, you have to add, do something and add, add something extra. And uh, uh, in, in the physics discussion, so this is UN, and uh, there is a UN part, and UN can be decomposed SUN part and U1 part. It is called the SU anomalies or U1 anomalies. Now, uh, what about the SU? Well, first of all, let's discuss the SU anomalies, SUNI anomaly. Uh, but uh, as it is. Um, and so what are the, uh, let's see, anomalies? And, and uh, um, well, it's for SUN anomalies, uh, there is actually a way, well, first of all, the first comment I have is that there is not a unique way to cancel the anomalies. So you can have complicated thing, for, for example, complicated 2D theory to cancel the anomaly, and it's, the choice is not at all unique. And depending on the choice, different choice, you get a different boundary BOA. Um, however, you can also try to look for canonical uh, or choices of uh, cancelling the anomaly. And there is one way for SUN anomaly. Um, by, uh, so this is cancelled by incorporating, uh, including boundary, 2D. Boundary means a 2D. Uh, free fermion, fermi mod, fermion. So in the BOA language, it's like a fermion. Uh, if you're worried about supersymmetry, it's a fermion multiplet, uh, fermions. Uh, or, and, uh, and the copies, uh, and, and how many fermions? Now, how many fermions you need? Uh, there's a formula for that, uh, which is that uh, WI plus BI plus uh, BI plus one plus BI minus one minus uh, two BI. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to write this as a W, so D equals to W uh, minus C V, where C is a Cartan matrix. So I forgot to say that I'm going to consider linear quiver chains, although some of us are going to say generalize to more general quivers, etc. Um, but let's say I'm going to discuss the linear chain of this type, and C is the Cartan matrix. So this is the same expressions. NI, sorry, where is NI? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm just confused. What, what's the, you have uh, J sub U N I current. Yes. Your, your alphas and betas and so on are going from one to ni. Ah, uh, sorry. Yeah, indeed. Sorry. Is, is that vi? Yes, yeah, sorry. Ni is vi. Sorry. Okay. Yes, indeed. Ni is vi. Sorry. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's right. So yes. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Anything else unclear? Oh, okay. There is another one there. Okay. So, uh, okay. I see. I see. In the anomaly. Oh, sorry. Okay. In the blackboard, it's uh, <laughs> if you're sitting in front of the blackboard, it's. Uh, Oh, oh, okay, I see, 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 good, good, thank you, yes. It's a little bit hard to see when you're in front, like, uh, that's a typical thing for a teacher. But in any case, um, let's see, so, uh, well, first of all, you need to add this thing. So you need to if, uh, if assume that this is zero or positive. When it's zero, it's called a balance, it's positive, uh, you can cancel the normally this way. Uh, it's just, and this condition, if you know, uh, is the same as the Gauto-Witten's uh, good classification for good theory. 
condition for good theory. Um, and uh, okay, so what about the U1 anomaly? Now, for the U1 anomaly, uh, there is uh, one way to cancel, one minimal way to cancel it, is to uh, incorporate, include uh, the Heisenberg HI for each vertex such that they have the OPE, I think you can see. So uh, OPE is the HI of HI is Z is equal to Z minus W squared times Cartan matrix. So th that way, that's a minimal way to cancel it. So actually, so we, we need uh, we need extra ingredients, uh, which is like a free fermion. DI copies of free fermions. Uh, which I might like a uh, five psi, for example, and then uh, Heisenberg. So these are the extra data. So I, I emphasize the parallel with the quiver variety, and that's uh, inspiring, but also there are some subtle differences. You have to add extra ingredients. So even the defining data requires extra data. And then once you do this, uh, you have to modify it, uh, phi i minus psi i, and uh, if I'm correct, you have to put in the yeah you have to put in the card generator. So this is the identity component. So this is the matrix. Uh, so you write on the diagonal part to be the card term. And and so it's actually interesting because the you see that this hi is like identity part. So this is the analog of the value, the kind of counter BOA counterpart of the value of the complex moment map. So uh, so let's see. There are extra subtleties, uh, but the story goes uh, well. And it works, uh, uh, okay, so once, once you have this, you have an A definition of the BOA. Um, now, you can ask the question of uh, uh, how does it look like, right? So, okay, I think I have 30 minutes. Yeah, uh, not 20, right? So, oh, yeah, sorry, it's like a 30 minutes or 20? Okay, 20, 20 minutes, yeah. So, okay, so let's see, uh, yeah, yeah, it's 20 minutes. So, okay, so what other, uh, what other series look like? Well. Okay, then I need to speed up a little bit, but uh, um, um, but let's see. Nevertheless, I'm a down-to-earth person, so before coming to a general theory, it's nice to talk about a very specific example, and 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 uh, it's this theory, um, and uh, it's a, an example of a balanced quiver. I uh, hope it's a quiver. Yes, too. So, for example, I can take a quiver of this type. Well, first of all, everything is explicit. So what you can do is to try to run the uh, BRST charge, everything is explicit. So if you want to go to the BRST, well, of course it's defined by BRST deduction. You need to find a nice operator which is invariant as BRST charge. So you can try to be hands-on and try to look for that. Now, um, let's see, so how, what, what is the way to uh, look for that? Well, uh, there are uh, some operators which you can write down. Well, for example, if you take I1 itself, it's not at all BRST invariant. It has indices, and indices don't uh, 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 transform non-trivially. So you need a little bit more uh, to, uh, to make it work. Now, there is, for example, some canonical, uh, well, let, well, let's see, uh, 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 at least a uh, uh, method for trying to guess what uh, the operators are. For example, you can start with this vertex. And, uh, and the first start with this I1 to go up, and then go, go to the left, uh, which is like a Y1, and then go down, for example, J2, for example. Now, it's like uh, going around the path, uh, and then, uh, and it's a gauge invariant. So this is actually how we see the co correspondence with the Higgs branch. So Higgs branch are parameterized gauge invariant operators, so this corresponds to pass, right? So I just do the BOA version of the same thing and write down the operator like this. Now, you can also write down the same thing in the opposite direction. So you can also go in this direction. Uh, so that's like, uh, uh, okay, what I should do? Uh, first, uh, okay, so if I want to, um, yeah, two from there, then I need to first I2. But then I need to take x1 and then uh, j1, or anyway, so maybe, maybe you're getting tired of indices. But in any case, uh, it just simply calls not the path going the other direction. Now you can try to go, uh, for example, there is actually a similar one, but uh, uh, staying at uh, one of the vertices. Um, and uh, yeah, it can be, um, let's see, so, uh, and then that's, that's this one, j11. And, uh, and, and in fact, uh, there's a, this one is particularly simple looking, because now, this is also another path which just uh, uh, going back and forth in between here. That's another cross pass. So you might write out the formula like this. Um, but uh, actually this itself is not gauge invariant. You need to add the Heisenberg, Heisenberg contributions. Uh, 
So, uh, which is the uh, uh, extra contribution. So, um, the, so the moral of the story is that uh, if you have a coordinate on the Coulomb branch, you can more or less uplift it to uh, the fields of the VOA, except that because, precisely because there are extra subtleties in the data, defining data, you have to correct it a little bit. But, sorry? Oh, sorry, I said, did I say Coulomb branch? Sorry, Higgs branch, yeah, sorry, sorry, yes. Higgs branch, yes. Well, of course, if you go to the mirror, it's a Coulomb branch, but uh, yes, Higgs branch, yes. So, so you, are the, you are in the, uh, uh, there, there, yeah, these are coordinates. And now, you might think that there are other, many other uh, paths, but it turns out there is a momentum up relation. And, uh, and so, uh, not everything is independent. It turns out that these all three are uh, what's necessary. Um, now, um, now, it turns out that this, if you have the three data, uh, the interesting thing is that if you take this and it takes some appropriate combinations, it turns out that uh, together with the, you, you need to add the of the fermions, etc. cetera. Um, but in the end, you can map it to a strong generators of, of the W algebra of GL4 and the minimal nilpotent orbit. F minimal means the minimal nilpotent orbit of the W algebra. Um, so, um, and so this is, uh, 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 okay, so this is not, not exactly so, uh, but, uh, uh, but essentially by uh, reshuffling the generators, uh, and then we can arrive at the W algebra. That we can check explicitly. If you look at section five of our paper, we have a detailed computations. And then, so there is a statement that this, in this particular example, uh, there is embedding, sorry, there is a homomorphism into the vertex operator, uh, boundary BOA we are starting with. Um, except that this is, W algebra is not everything. There are many other generators involving the fermions, et cetera. So this thing is even richer than this original W algebra. Now, um, this raises um, uh, many questions. Well, first of all, um, like uh, if, if there is a W algebra, like uh, can you try to find some nice structures? Well, first of all, can you, I didn't guess what type of sub -R, R algebras uh, for, uh, you might expect for a gen more general quiver rather than this, for example. And uh, well, and uh, also, like for example, if there's something else uh, here, then uh, what you're going to, uh, like a, it's not just a W algebra, but something more. And how you study this? Well, in principle, you can have the fermionic generators and things like that, and that's actually what we tried. But the formula looks increasingly complicated, as often the case in the, this POA. So we need a systematic procedure. Now, uh, in the remaining time, I'm trying to try to explain that systematic procedure. Um, and, uh, and, and the idea is that, uh, so it's, it's, I would call it the localization of quiver BOA. Um, okay, so what is the idea? Well, the idea is to try to appeal to the intuition between the geometry, the uh, uh, quiver variety, and then there is a counterpart, this vertex operator. So this is BOA. So this is a quiver variety. So it's a geometry. Now, uh, the boundary BOA is complicated, but of course the quiver variety itself is also complicated. So the question is that, is there a way to understand it in a simple way? And, and this is a variety, so one of the, one of the procedures is, is that, well, if you, you can go to a, a local uh, patch. So this is algebraic, so if you take some polynomial, so this is, uh, so this is uh, defined by the region where polynomial is non-zero. You go to an open set in the Zariski topology, and then uh, things are, in, we are in a smaller space. And you can keep going to even smaller spaces, smaller spaces, et cetera, and it becomes even, even simpler. Now there's a counterpart of this in the BOA. So this is more like uh, uh, the lingual functions uh, on this variety. So if you have the, uh, this type of procedure, you can actually, there is going to be embedding uh, into uh, uh, another BOA. And then you, you can keep going that. And at some point, you expect that the geometry is so simple that uh, the procedure is terminates at some point and you have a free BOA. And if you take advantage of that, that means that the whole thing is embedding into uh, free fields. So uh, you expect the free field realizations. Or Miura transformation and their generalizations. So this is, the, this is the idea. Now, how to do that? Well, uh, one of the systematic ways is to um, consider, um, so you, you need to 
uh, do something at the BOA and apply the procedure of restricting the patch and things like that. And there is a very nice way of doing that, and that uses the idea of C4 BOAs. So you can consider C4 BOAs. Okay, so C4 BOAs, I'm afraid that I, I have no time to even remotely comment on that, but at least uh, it's, a, so see, it's a shift, which means that for each open set, like this one, there is associated BOA, and satisfy some compatibility condition uh, between, the, uh, between the open set, and, and then you can define some C4 BOAs, uh, and uh, such that uh, uh, in some region, so okay, what is F? So this is like, uh, and, then, and then you expect uh, uh, some simplification to happen. Uh, so you expect a C4 BOA. And uh, uh, let's see. And then uh, you, once you have the C4 BOAs, uh, you can, well, it's actually, it's most strictly speaking, it's called the H bar addict BOA because you have to take, you're taking the inverse of the fields. You have to worry about the convergence, uh, which concept was introduced by Arakawa and collaborators. Um, and then, uh, and then you, you, once you have the C4 BOAs, you can take a global section. And, uh, and that defines uh, uh, some, some BOA. So this is a global section. And H bar is not necessary, so I can set H bar to one. Um, so this is an, uh, the group of BOA. And in fact, uh, because, precisely because uh, this one behaves nicely under this type of operations, uh, you can show that uh, this has a free field realization. Um, yeah, so let's see, so the statement, so the theorem, one of the theorems is that, uh, um, uh, well, so this, uh, uh, this algebra, uh, H, H uh, sorry, here is, I don't need H bar, H bar is set to one. Uh, so this uh, M, uh, M, M, well, actually I consider M tilde, M tilde, which is the extended quiver, which I defined earlier, and, and then this has embedding. Uh, into a uh, beta gamma system, well, in the language of this notation, uh, you get the T star of C n slash M um, times some Heisenberg, copies of Heisenberg at each vertex. So there is a formula for N and M, uh, but I don't remember it now, so I'm not going to write down it in a paper. So these are integers. And these are also levels uh, which you can compute a priori. And then these are like a Heisenberg. And, and then, uh, so these are the beta gamma system. So uh, that's uh, one of the statement. And, and in fact, uh, this is an explicit, uh, well, the, it's, it's not like an ex existence statement. There is a precise algorithm. So the procedure is that you're starting with a quiver. And then there is a procedure for el eliminating that to make it a simple quiver. And they keep doing that. In fact, essentially, in the process, it's somewhat like a confinement, actually, that, that uh, you remove the gauge node of the quiver. So in each process, you keep removing the gauge node of the quiver. At some point, there is no gauge group. So you get a simple theory. BRS reduction becomes trivial, and you get something like this. And you can work this out uh, very explicitly. And, uh, and then for example, in some examples, um, uh, you can show that, uh, uh, for example, in the examples we discussed uh, before, uh, where there is a W algebra. Uh, you can apply this procedure and, uh, and, then, uh, and then try to see what type of field realizations you get. And it turns out that that's uh, what you get uh, from the Wakimoto free field realizations. But this one is much more general. So uh, you, you can do a variety of quivers and very systematic procedure for writing the free field realizations. Okay, yeah. Um, so so that's, the, that's the thing. Um, but now I have just a little bit of time, so I'll let me try to uh, fill in one missing point, actually, in this discussion. So here, it's actually, you notice that things are subtle. Uh, the reason is the following. So, so, okay, I declare that I was interested in studying this BOA, right? So that's what we wanted to study. And then I say I, I invoke the gadget. Uh, yeah, so this is, uh, yeah, so this uh, C for BOAs. And, uh, and, uh, uh, and define some D. And it's, it has a nice free field realizations. But uh, a priori, uh, this D 
can be different from this B, which I wanted to study originally. And uh, yeah, it's a, actually a very subtle question. So, in the, so the difference is that here, I define take a global section first and do the BRC reduction. But here in this business, you first take, do the BRC reduction locally and then take a global section. And there is no guarantee that they commute. Uh, so they, they might not be isomorphic, for example. And, uh, or, so, so the question, there is a question hanging around that uh, what is the relation between the two? And we certainly know, don't know the final answer. Uh, but at least there is one particular statement we, got, we, we, we are going to show uh, in the second version of the series, which is this math paper. Um, so this is a theorem. So uh, there are two assumptions. Assume, uh, well, first of all, uh, I defined previously that di equals to wi uh, plus di minus 1 plus bi plus 1 minus 2bi is, pos is uh, 0 or positive. So this is a good. I still keep assuming that. And, uh, and then, and, and one of the following. And uh, so these are the, yeah, the various different cases of the quiver. So for example, one is that the quiver is totally negative. So uh, it means that the Q is Q is complete. And, uh, and uh, so it, the cartel matrix is negative, if you like, but uh, complete and two, two, two set of arrows at each vertex. So this is one case. Well, yeah, you can have, for example, two nodes, for example, and then there should be at least two nodes, two arrows here. It's a little bit weird one, which you usually don't encounter in physics, I guess. But, uh, and then it's a complete graph, uh, so it's, uh, it's connected, something like that. Uh, now, another case is the D is the dinking. Well, dinking in the, I'm still assuming that it's a linear quiver. And, uh, or another more way of saying that is that uh, it's almost a, vertex is almost a billion, except at two points or maximally two points. So it includes the, uh, well, let's see, actually uh, Q is, a, uh, and then another is A1 quiver, and another is the Jordan quiver. So these are the technical, uh, technical requirements to, in order for the proof. And, uh, and then uh, the, res the result, um, yeah, so this is uh, also a theorem in a paper. Uh, and uh, another theorem in a paper, uh, this is uh, by us, uh, 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 Z, um, uh, is that uh, there is a, uh, so, well, first of all, the, there is a, you can show in general, uh, there is embedding. Uh, into this uh, uh, safe version of BOA, the global section of the safe version of BOA. So there is always a, a homomorphism as a vertex super algebra in between the two. And uh, this is injective. Oh, sorry, I wrote a theorem, sorry. Okay, I, need, I, I don't need to, okay, maybe I should write it here. Then, uh, injective. Uh, we also have a related result uh, about the banishing of the negative part of the cohomology. Uh, but let me not light it now. But uh, at least uh, you can show that this map is at least injective. Now, once you have this, you can try to make the loose end, uh, 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 loose end because first of all, you are, originally you might be interested in this, but that's Im embedded to this uh, C version of this, which now has a free field realization. And if this is injective, so that becomes embedding. And then uh, this part is also embedding. And hence, you, get, uh, you have a proof that's embedded into the free field BOA. So you have a free field realization of this guy. Yes. Now, I, I have a four, five minutes, so I can comment a little bit uh, uh, on also the connection to the W algebra. Um, yeah, so, well, uh, as I said at the middle, middle we have a connection of these two W algebras in, in some cases. Uh, but now the W algebras themselves are not these uh, uh, boundary BOAs. 
So in some cases, there is a, uh, there is a morphism. Uh, but it's actually not, not necessarily easy to say in general whether it's injective or, uh, or uh, uh, subjective. Uh, but first of all, uh, but sometimes, for example, if you go, go through this bit, so this has a free theorization, so you can, we already have a, this algebra. So you can just go ahead, and then this is mapped to, uh, to, uh, uh, to the free field. And then, you can, that, and then you can check what type of free theorization you get. And in some cases, it coincides with the free theorizations uh, known in the literature. In which case, we know that it's embedding. So in that case, there is also, also an injection. Uh, so you can make a connection to the W algebra. And, um, uh, okay, so which W algebra? Well, that, that for, to properly explain that takes more minutes, uh, uh, but there is a class of Kuiper gauge series uh, which goes by the name of T rho sigma theory uh, in the notation of Gautu Witten. Uh, so uh, in particular, the Higgs branch of this theory is an important cone associated with the transpose rho a intersection with a throttle with size for sigma. And uh, in this case, and, and in particular, for example, when this sigma is one comma one comma one, uh, so these sigma and rows are partitions of n. n. And uh, so when this, is sim when this is the case, well, the, and, uh, and then you have the sigma only, and then you, there is an expectation that you get the W algebra associated with this uh, uh, near potent element coming from the sigma, and then uh, you get the level W n minus one. Um, not a critical level, it's a little bit off, uh, but there is a, a W algebra a map from into the vertex of the algebra. So there is still a connection to W algebra. You, you, we know in some cases, and we have some non-trivial checks for that. Now, um, I'm going to finish by saying that, uh, okay, so this is a sub-algebra. So, uh, well, okay, I, I haven't checked that uh, it's actually embedding in general, but it's sometimes it's a, it's a part of the story of the BOA, not everything. And, uh, well, in that case, and so you can naturally imagine that is there any way to characterize this W algebra inside this BOA? And I don't know the answer. I don't know the answer, except that there seems to be some connection uh, to nice mathematics known as the Namikawa Bayer group. So this is related to the resolution of singularities, um, deformation of the, the symplectic resolutions. And uh, in that story, Namikawa find a, have a nice story where there is uh, some version of the wild group acting uh, on the geometry. And, and you can talk about the similar version of that on this geometry. And in the, so it's, in that case, as far as I know, I don't crave to know much about it, but as far as I know, it's a, it's a permutation. And then, so the natural expectation is that the image of this is in the fixed point set. Uh, of this thing under the Namikawa wide group. Um, so it seems that there is um, some more story to be clarified and, uh, and, and along the way, uh, the study of the, uh, the, the geometry itself uh, could play some important role. So I guess uh, my time is up, so let me finish. Thank you. Hi. Uh, if I consider the D3 NS5 brain, D5 brain construction for this to witten theory, yes. uh, what's the 2D boundary modes come from? Uh, like uh, this uh, Heisenberg algebra and this uh, yeah, zero comma two from a modulus? That's a boundary condition, so you have to, it's extra ingredient which you need to add. Uh, so it's not a 3D theory degrees of freedom, but uh, extra degrees of freedom localized on the boundary. Now, um, so for free fermions, you just include a fermion multiplet. So that's a multiplet in 2D preserving half the supersymmetries. Now, uh, if Heisenberg, okay, so it, it's Heisenberg, it's, uh, it looks a little bit artificial, but you can also, if, you, uh, it's, it, if it's fine to add extra U1 current, you can also inc realize them by free fermions on the boundary. So the short answer is that uh, it's not a part of the property of the theory, but it's more like a property of the boundary condition. And, and you need to, yes. You have some description of your theory from like 10 dimensions or whatever. Yes. Then uh, reducing should give you also the boundary condition. Yeah. I mean, so it, as I think the question yeah. is, how do you learn that boundary condition by, uh, from this reduction? Uh, well, let's see. I mean, here it's, um, I mean, let's see. First of all, it's not unique. You can have different boundary conditions. 
as long as it's compatible with the A twist and preserve it consistent with the supercharge, it works. So it's not, first of all, it's not a unique choice. That's comment one. And the comment two is that, okay, but if you're still looking for some nice interpretation, for example, well, you can, depending on whether you can go to 4D or 6D, et cetera, but let's say if you don't go to 4D. And then one way to, is to do is to go to a cigar, 4D cigar. And uh, so instead of having a, uh, uh, um, so we have a 3D zero on the interval, right? So if you suppress the two dimensions, it's a boundary condition here. And then you can start with the, uh, so this is a 3D theory. But you can go to the 4D theory on a cigar uh, with omega background turned on. And, and then you can discuss the VOA at here. And in that setup, um, so that's just a 4D n equal 2 series omega background. And, uh, and uh, there's a nice paper by Yagi and, and uh, Jiwan Ho, uh, which says that actually the setup is the same as the, uh, what the Rastedi beam and others do in the connection with constructed chiral algebra from 4D theory. So in that case, uh, that's just omega background, you reduce it, that's it. And in that case, actually, but there are important differences actually, because in that case, okay, what happened to the choice of boundary condition I have been talking about? Well, it's related to the fact that, first of all, in that case, people typically are interested in super conformal case in 4D. It's, it's called a balanced, uh, in, in this language, it's a balanced quiver, so there's no need for add extra matter. Uh, also, they're doing SUN gauging instead of UN, for example, so they don't care about UN normally. So but because of these reasons, uh, you don't really have to worry about it. The canonical choice is almost uh, empty. And then that's how you get the, uh, the boundary VOA in our tense. But, uh, so you, you can sometimes go to 4D, but our discussion, uh, at least as the defining data is much, much more rich. So Nakajima quiver varieties are famous for being hyperkähler. Does that mean that this vertex operator algebra has some kind of n equals four superconformal algebra? Um, let's see. Um, um, I see. Mm, mm, yeah, I mean, it's a, it, it could be. Yeah, indeed, the boundary conditions are zero four, for example. So it's consistent with supersymmetry. So. Uh, Large or small n equals four superconformal yeah, algebra. Uh, yeah, that I need to think. But uh, if I have to bet, well, it's fun if you get a large one, but, <laughs> but probably not. But uh, if I have to bet now, but uh, yeah, but I think that's interesting. Yes, and indeed, probably because I have so far really touched on the fermionic part of the direction and then defined the W algebra. But then you have to fermionic parts. You have to. Yeah, I mean, it has to depend on how you cancel the anomalies. You could cancel the anomalies in some way that doesn't have any anything to do with n equals four. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. So I think uh, the hope is that at least this is a kind of there is a Heisenberg, etc. It's a kind of most minimal way of canceling the anomaly. So in that case, you might have ho hope of uh, having the, uh, having larger supersymmetry. Yes. As you say, in general, we can have any anything with uh, with a lower supersymmetry. So yeah, um, it, yeah. Uh, probably it's too much to hope for uh, that supersymmetric version of this. But uh, I, th I think it's an interesting question. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know the final answer. If you have n equal eight, then ah. you can go. If you have n equal eight, then the boundary oh, algebra will have in a special case, yeah, a small n equal four. Yeah. I don't n equal six. Mm. Mm. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think. Yeah, thank you for asking. I, should, I really should look into that. Yeah, I mean, so so far, we have the very com computation, very simple examples, a very very explicit and in general argument. So, but uh, a lot of examples are yet to be explored. So, I think there are room for further discoveries. Question in the back. I just wanted to know if you have any counterexamples to this injectivity. Um, subject, sorry, su subjectivity here. No, no uh, 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 to, to injectivity, do you have any counterexamples? Ah, for injectivity, not that I know of. Uh, at least this one, right? So, yeah. Uh, let's see, was, was that okay? Yeah, I think, it, yeah. I mean, there is some, some counterpart of some statement in the Arakawa's paper, but I don't remember if it was this statement, but uh, yeah. I, I need to check, but I, I believe that there is no counterexample. I can correct it if I, yeah. But it's somebody else's paper, so I don't claim to read it too well, but uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Ah, this one. No, no, not, not this one, this one. Oh, uh, horizontal one, yeah. Oh, sorry, this one, right? So, yeah, 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 that, that, I, when, when I, I, I meant that, yes, ah. when, when I deprived it, yes. Um. So if there are no more questions, let's thank the speaker and the next. <laughs>